What is up, everybody? How you doing out there? It's 8.30, and I have an errand to run, and uh, just so happens to be kind of far, you know? Um, I wanted to talk about a few things. Uh, some of it's going to be guitar-related, and some of it's not going to be guitar-related. Um... And I guess the, the first thing that I want to talk about, and this might help you through your life, okay, so it's like life advice, is after I had my heart attack and I was telling people about it, a lot of people were like, man, that's really scary, you know, or were you afraid? Or things like that. And, you know, being perfectly honest, I wasn't afraid for one second during any of it. Um, the way that I describe it is I was inconvenienced. Because that's really what it felt like, like I was being inconvenienced. And it's, it's because really there's very little that I'm afraid of, you know. Um, I, I used to be somebody that had a lot of fear. Um, but after I discovered what causes fear, um, and, and it was just by being self-reflective, and uh, being introspective and kind of examining what was going on inside me, um, I realized that I'm not really afraid of, of anything, right? Um, it's it, like fear is almost like a fake emotion and it's nonsensical. You know, because there's there's nothing to fear. Because no matter what happens, everything's going to be okay. And and I know that that sounds kind of weird to some people because they'll be like, well, everything's not going to be okay. Well, what if what if this happens and what if that happens and what if this happens? You know, and you're playing the what if game. And, and the what-if game is nonsensical and pointless, right? It's just what is. What is. I'm going to turn this light on a little bit to give a little bit of a better ambiance. And let me give you, let me give you an example. My wife and I, this is when I had uh, my new Mercedes. And I loved that car. I really did. It's a Maryland mobile. I just had surgery on my foot, and so I was taking a leave of absence from work because I couldn't really walk. And I was trying to do what I could, and I was hobbling and whatnot, but I can't stand staying still, you know. So, I asked my wife, do you want to go to Kohl's? And she's like, yeah, sure, you know, but I can't stay out late. I'm like, yeah, we're not going to stay out late. So we go to Kohl's, buy some clothes, and we're, we're getting ready, to, we're leaving. We come up to a, a stoplight, and I'm thinking, how am I going to talk my wife into going to the mall? You know, she wants to go home, but I want to go to the mall to get some shoes, you know? And I'm thinking, maybe I can sell it to her if I tell her, maybe we'll go to Nordstrom's or something like that. And I'm thinking, how am I going to convince her to say, yeah, let's go to the mall instead of, you know, no, take me home. And the light turns green. And I'm getting ready to throw out my sales pitch about going to the mall. And through the peripheral, 
on my, my left side, I see movement. And I'm thinking there should be no movement over there, you know? And I kind of look like, I look over to the side and I see, I thought it was a black truck. It was hauling ass, man. And it was gonna, it was coming straight for me. And in a split second, all of the, all of these thoughts happen in a split second. I'm thinking, I'm not going to be able to dodge this. It's going to hit me right at the door. Because, it, it, I mean, by the time I noticed it, it was already 20 feet, maybe 30 feet from me. And it was hauling ass. Later on, it, it, it came out that they were going about 72 to 75 miles an hour. Okay? And, and it was like maybe 30 feet, you know, away from the door. And I realized they're going to hit me right at the door. And I'm not going to survive this, you know. And my my thought was two different things. The first was, so this is how it ends, huh? Interesting. Because I really didn't think it would end like like a car accident like that. I really didn't think it. And I and I was kind of. Um, almost internally grinning like huh how about that okay that that's how I was going to exit and then the second thing I was thinking is I have to see what I can do to try to protect my wife from this hit because she was sitting over in the passenger seat and I, I say, they're not gonna, I was gonna say, they're not gonna stop, but I didn't get that far. I'm just like, they're not gonna, and I leaned over, and like I was trying to kind of like protect her, which is kind of dumb because me putting my body like that wouldn't have done anything at that kind of impact. Boom. Right? Glass shatters, airbags deploy, car gets moving around in all weird directions and it's kind of like for a split second everything went black for a split second and then I open my eyes and it's kind of dusty and like smoky and, and I look up and I can see the green light and I thought huh I'm still here that was interesting Okay. When throughout that entire thing, when the paramedics showed up and all that other stuff, and they were taking everybody's blood pressure and checking their vitals, my wife's blood pressure was through the roof. The lady that had hit us had ran a red light. She was on her cell phone, and um, she blood pressure through the roof. I was standing on the corner and I was telling jokes, and my blood pressure was lower than what uh, an average person's was. It was probably like around 116 over something and a normal pulse rate. And they said, I don't understand. How is it that you're so calm when you were just in this, this massive accident that could have killed you? And I said, I'm still here. I'm not dead. You know, I, it's like, there. Why? why should I think about what could have been I'm here. And everything everything that I could hope that I would do in a bad situation, I did plus. So that person that I wish that I was, it turns out I am that person. I am that person plus. You know? So I was in a state of bliss. Um, because I faced death head on and I grinned at it. And, I, and, it, and it didn't bother me, you know. My wife, and this kind of goes, goes back to what I was talking about, you know, and I know it's a long, drawn-out story, but my wife kept saying, you know, that woman, what if there was somebody that was crossing the street on a bicycle? What if there was a motorcycle? What if there was blah, blah, blah? What if this? What if that? And I told her, babe, 
you're talking about an alternate universe. That is not what happened. What happened is she ran a red light and she hit us that were in a Mercedes and the Mercedes was incredibly safe and well built. And that's why we're here. That's what happened. Nobody died. We got injured, but nobody died. You know, you're talking about an alternate universe and you're getting upset over an alternate universe. You know, and, and you really need to, you know, you really need to think like that. Most people don't. You know, what if, oh, what if you're talking about an alternate universe? That's not what happened. This is what happened. That's what we should be dealing with. That's what, that's what we should be dealing with. Not thinking about what could have been, should have been, all that other stuff. You know, accepting what is the current state being in the present not not thinking about a future that you don't know about you know you can't predict the future and why would you want to sit there and think that the future is going to end up bad you don't know that for sure right you don't really know anything about the future you know, we can take educated guesses on it. It kind of looks like this is what's going to happen. But a lot of times it doesn't. You know, it's 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 a it's a crap, crap throw, you know, crap toss or whatever you call it. Um, we don't know. So I can sit back and I get, oh, worry about what might happen. And then it never happens. And then that means that whole time I was miserable for nothing. Or what I can do is just be in the moment and deal with everything that's in the moment and not worry about the future because the future is going to take care of itself, you know? So during the time that I was having a heart attack, I was more surprised by it and more inconvenienced by it than anything. Because I was tired and I would rather sleep than have a heart attack, you know, and when, when I was having it, I was a little confused because it came out of nowhere. It was, I'm fine, bam, heart attack. And because I had never had a heart attack before, it was taking me a few seconds to kind of understand what I was going through. You know, because I'm like, oh, I've got, I've never felt like this before. I've got this situation. I've got this thing in my back. I've got my left arm. I'm breaking out in a cold sweat. I'm having a difficult time breathing. When you add all those together, what do you have? Heart attack. You know, and I'm just like, son of a bitch. So I told my wife, I, you better take me to the hospital. I think I'm having a heart attack because I've never felt like this before. You know, and so... I'm outside waiting for her um, to come out and take me to the hospital. And the whole time that I'm out there, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to breathe. And I'm only, the only thing I'm thinking is, you know, man, she takes a long time. You know, she takes a long time. And, you know, this time it was actually faster than normal. But, you know, it's like she takes a long time. She always takes a long time, you know, and, and I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, man, you know, I'm sitting there having a heart attack. At least I think I am at that time. And I'm like, and you're kind of slow. You don't move. You don't move with a sense of urgency, you know? And so now, and now if anything, I'm getting annoyed because I'm like, it's, it's an ongoing thing. This always happens. You know, it doesn't matter. It's not just when I have heart attacks. It's always, you know, she, she dilly dallies. And I had joked with her previously that I was going to buy a defibrillator. So if I ever have a heart attack, I can, I can give myself shocks because I know by the time she's done getting ready, I'll be dead. You know, and then, you know, it's like a joke, but at the same time, there's some truth to it. But anyway, we get to the hospital and she's like, well, you know, where is this, this, and blah, blah. And I'm like, just pull in right there. I'll walk in. 
you know, well, where should I park? I'm like, y babe, just drop me off and you can find a spot. It's like, I don't really want to talk about this right now. You know, I'm having a heart attack. I don't want to talk about this shit right now. You know, it's, I'm being inconvenienced and I'm being annoyed. And, you know, during the time of it, am I thinking I could die? Yeah, I am thinking like that. And, you know, the only thought that I was having when it came to I might die was kind of like, does my wife know all of my passwords? Does she, does she know how to collect my life insurance? I'm thinking about her, you know, I'm not, I'm not even thinking for us, like for a second about myself. I'm not thinking about life after death. I'm not worried about anything. I, I'm concerned about my wife not having access to stuff. And then, so after they check me in and my wife and I go into the room and they have all of the stuff hooked up to her, uh, hooked up to me, I'm talking to her about we need to have all of the stuff um, for each other somewhere that if something happens to us, um, the other one doesn't have to search for it. And I told her, you know, when it comes to my passwords and this, this, and this, this is generally what it is, just in case something happens to me. Oh, nothing's going to happen to you. You don't know that. You don't know that, you know. And I'm not trying to scare you. I'm not trying to get any pity. I'm just telling you, it's like, I'm, I'm trying to throw you a bone just in case something bad happens, you know. But throughout the entire time, all of that was going on, even when they were going to cut me open and, and do the heart stuff and whatever, all of that, I, I don't think I thought about dying because it didn't matter. Whether I live or die doesn't matter. You know, it, it, it's okay. Death is not punishment for anything. You know, I don't fear death. I, I don't, I don't fear, I don't fear not existing and, and I don't fear going to heaven or hell or any of that other stuff because I don't believe in heaven and hell. I, I think the concept of it is ridiculous, you know, and um, if there is a God, I also know that that God would understand why I am the way that I am and why I believe the things that I believe. And, it, and, it, and it's not because I have any, um, you know, malicious intent or I'm just a hateful person. It's because everything points to what I, what I have come to that conclusion. It's an, it's an honest perspective, you know, and God would also know that I had tried to seek God out. I had tried to seek the truth out numerous times and my heart is pure when it comes to that. And I think that if there is a God, that God would end up having mercy upon me if I made a bad decision or two, because God would understand why I did it. And it wasn't because I had any uh, malicious intent. I know that I am imperfect, but I have a good heart, even though I have an aneurysm on it. I have a good heart. And my, and my intentions, most of the time, most of the time, are pure. And they're good. Most of the time they are. But there's a little bit of me that is human and um, I'm trying to understand what this person is doing but there's yeah there's parts of me that are human and and when I say that I mean evolutionarily uh, unevolved there, you know, parts of me that I, I, I don't think that are um, the best parts of, of being alive, you know, I, like noble things. Um, but most of the time, 
what's in my heart is, is pure and, and I have good intentions most of the time. So I don't worry about heaven or hell. Plus, I can kind of disprove both of them. Um, and I can disprove of most of the near-death experiences that people have where they say, I saw this, this, and this. I can disprove it. Okay. Now, I, when I say that I can disprove it, I'm not saying... I'm doubting what that person had experienced, but what what they had experienced compared to what it actually was, two different things. Because their description of things under scrutiny, it would fall apart. And you can tell that it's a human creation. The human mind had put it together know you can tell so I don't worry about that stuff and you know everybody's always talking about oh you got to get right with Jesus and you got to get right with God and everything and and I and I'm gonna tell you something and I really mean this when I say it the people that say that have absolutely no idea about God or Jesus they have absolutely no idea they're, they're talking when they shouldn't be. It's Dunning-Kruger. You know, they have, they don't realize the amount of time that I had spent looking into, researching, studying, experimenting, everything to try to find the truth about all of that. You know what a lot of people don't realize? is that I'm actually ordained. I'm an, I actually am an ordained minister. You guys don't know that because I haven't talked about it. But I know a lot more about the Bible and about Christianity than most people would think. And I'm telling you, the current, the, the way that people have interpreted it, the stuff that they believe is inaccurate. But like I said, I don't really believe in it. Not anymore. I used to. But anyway, that goes off on a different tangent. But one of the things that people worry about is dying. Because heaven and hell. There is nothing... This, this life... This life, there is nothing to learn during it. This life is not a test. So it's not like, oh, you, there's things that you're supposed to learn and do, and then you, you're going to graduate in the next life, or it's going to send you to a special place as long as you do these things. Horseshit. Horseshit. This life has absolutely no meaning behind it at all. The meaning of life, if you really want to know what the meaning of life is, it's the experience of life. That is it. That is it. It's the experience of life. Because there is nothing here of value. There, you're born with nothing. You leave with nothing. You, everything, you think that you, you have people around you. You have friends and, and you're in a community and all this other stuff and you're not alone. Wake up. You're alone. You've always been alone. You're, you, when you're born you're born alone. When you suffer, you suffer alone. And when you die, you die alone. There might be other people in the room, but you're the one experiencing it. Everything is through your eyes. You are alone. You might be able to convey some of your feelings with somebody and they might be able to say, I feel something similar. And you can, you can share an experience perhaps, but you guys are both experiencing it separately. You're alone. And everything that happens here on this planet doesn't matter. Eventually, one of these days, you're going to die. And they'll either burn you or throw you in a hole. And you're going to be forgotten about. Ecclesiastes talks about this. Right? But it's pointless 
Life is pointless. There's nothing you can achieve that matters. The only thing that matters is experience. Before, before you were born, you didn't exist for an eternity, for an infinity going in that direction. After you die, you're not going to an, exist for an infinity going in the opposite direction. This small little time that you're alive, this small, small little time is a vacation from your natural state of non-existence. Do you honestly think that any of this matters? It doesn't. It's garbage. Now, when I say it's garbage, I don't mean that life itself is garbage. It's what society has turned it into is garbage. It's distracted you from life. It's distracted you from the experiences. It's given you more misery than it's given you joy. And it's all nonsense and people seeking power and people seeking control and people seeking money, but money represents control and power. All I have is my experiences. That's it. And so whether I'm experiencing something good or I'm experiencing something bad, it doesn't matter because I'm experiencing it. I had a heart attack. Yeah, I did. But you know something? I got to experience a heart attack. And I, and I, and I live to tell the tale. I can tell you what it's like to have a heart attack. I, I was admitted into a hospital to two of them. I never had been admitted into a hospital before. And what an uncomfortable experience. I think that's worse than the heart attack. But I'm going to tell you, I got to experience that. How great is that? I had, I had a surgery where I was kind of awake during it. How many people have got, can say that they've had that done? How many, how many people can say that all of these horrible things that happened to me happen to them there's I'm sure there's some of course there's some I got to experience an aneurysm and blood clots I always wondered what that was like I got to experience it I got I, I, I got to experience multiple sclerosis I got to experience um, optic neuritis I've got to experience my immune system eating away my central nervous system. How many of you can say that? And even though it's bad, you know, even though it's bad, at the same time, I got to experience that. And so you talk about a full life. My life, because of the excessive suffering that I've had to go through in it, is a much more full life than the person that had none. So when you are suffering, realize it's a blessing because you're getting to experience things other people are never going to get to experience. And that's all you have is the experience. And when you die, you're going to lose that too because nothing lasts forever. And it's okay. It's okay. You know? Was I afraid? Absolutely not. I was having an experience. And if it was the last experience I was going to have, then so be it. Because I don't control any of it. Life is destined, guys. Life is destined. You do not have free will. I know it looks like you do. But you do not. Something else is in control of all of this. And there has been a governor put in place to prevent you from altering the direction of it. You're a chess piece on a board that somebody else is controlling. But you know something? It's the ultimate virtual reality movie. 
and you're the main actor and you get to experience it but it's it was written and directed by somebody else and when you realize this you realize all I've got is the experience and if you look deep enough inside yourself you're gonna realize that in the back of your mind there's an observer it's watching everything it doesn't say anything it's just watching it watches your thoughts it watches everything your surroundings your behavior your words your emotions it's just observing it's for the experience because its natural state is non-existence everybody's got it wrong sure is convincing though sure is convincing but there is no free will. You know, it's, it's easy to disprove free will because as long as you believe in cause and effect, there can't be, there can't be free will because this caused this and this caused that and this caused that, right? And also, you can look at it like this. Does one neuron have free will? No. Does two? No. Does three? No. Okay, how many neurons do you have to put together then all of a sudden it has free will? Why is it that everything else in this universe is bound by the laws of physics except the human being? It's because we're not an exception. It's an illusion, guys. Chemical physics, the stuff that's happening within our brain, it's all predictable if you know all the factors. And it's a chain reaction, and there's nothing you can do about it. And whether you believe it or you don't is irrelevant because it doesn't change reality. The things that I thought I was afraid of when it comes to death were the things that I was afraid of in life. And then I realized those things were actually just unresolved problems from my youth and as I resolved them they no longer bothered me and all of my fears for the most part disappeared and I learned to quit caring because caring does nothing except beat up your body and make you have a miserable experience everything will take care of itself guys just trust just trust the the entities the things that are controlling this show because there's nothing you can do about it anyway and whatever's in the cards for you is going to happen it's, it's inevitable and, but you don't get to control it and also when you start realizing a lot of this stuff and you start paying attention you'll start seeing how everything kind of fits into place you know, it really does. You'd be like, you know, I remember, you know, in sixth grade, this, this, and this happened or whatever. And it, it made an impact. And I never understood why, um, it, you know, I would remember this thing. And then one day, all of a sudden, that stuff, you need it. And it's like, wow, that worked out perfectly, didn't it? Yeah, everything seems to work out. And everything that you, you're just like, wow, huh, you know, it, it was it was almost like it was meant to be. It's like a movie, you know, if you pay attention, if you pay attention close enough, everything does work out just like a movie. So enjoy the experience. You know? Don't be afraid of anything. You know, and that's another thing. Hurt being hurt. Hurt is just, uh, it's just a feeling. That's all. You know, it, it doesn't really mean anything. It's discomfort. Physical pain is just your body saying, hey, um, 
something's being injured, so you need to kind of move away from it because, you know, it's being injured. That's really all pain is. Something's being injured, you need to tend to it. Right? But if you realize that what's being injured is not really as bad as the pain suggests, it's easy to ignore it and say, yeah, yeah. It's not a big deal. It hurts, but it's okay. It's not a big deal. Um, everybody's driving kind of like a fool. I'm just going to park here. But anyway, guys, it's something I could talk about a lot of. But hopefully that helped you a little bit. Anyway, that's my video. I'm at my destination. Maybe on the way home I'll talk more. Anyway, I'll talk to you later.